You're listening to CRM Audio, the Dynamics 365 podcast. This is a special episode from the Extreme 365 conference in Long Beach, California. This week, we're joined by special guest Chris Huntingford. But first, I'd like to thank our sponsor, Enogic. Enogic is a leading Microsoft Gold Dynamics CRM ISV delivering best-in-class Dynamics 365 customer engagement solutions, as well as cost-effective and high-quality offshore Dynamics CRM programming services. Enogic's innovative solution portfolio includes Maplytics, a premier map visualization, routing, and geoanalytics app for Dynamics 365 customer engagement. Enalic that offers a seamless integration between QuickBooks and Dynamics 365 customer engagement and other productivity apps like User Adoption Monitor, Click to Clone, and Click to Export. We thank Enalgic for supporting CRM Audio, the Dynamics 365 podcast. All right, so this is like uh, worlds colliding. Kinda. You were joined by Chris Huntingford. What's up? <laughs> and Chris is uh, Chris is one of our colleagues from the UK. He's also very active online, better known as the Tattooed CRM Guy. That's it, man. It's uh, the name speaks for itself. So, Chris, <laughs> how did you come up with that name, Tattooed CRM Guy? I can't see why you would call yourself. That. <laughs> if only you guys could see. But um, so basically, um, when I first started, when I first started in Dynamics, probably about about eight and a half years ago roughly at Carabina and um, I got my first tattoo and my boss always said to me man you look like you could hit with a wet newspaper <laughs> and I never I never really had the kahunas to actually create the, 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 the Twitter name and then I moved here and I thought you know what what the hell why not so yeah, there that, it is. That tattoo you have of the Dynamics Serum 2011 logo is awesome. Oh, it's on, it's weird because it's on my backside. I don't know what Joel's looking at. <laughs> I, I I particularly like the uh, Dynamics CRM 1.2 target with the arrow. <laughs> that that oddly enough, full back tattoo. Oh yeah, is it insane. is. Yeah, yeah. I don't understand it, but uh, <laughs> it's uh, really impressive. I'm, I'm, I'm planning to get the, the D365 logo on my forehead. Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Just, right. just so that I can identify with my customers. Full yeah, that'd be, that'd be good. And you, of course, you have to have Azure now because everything's Azure. <laughs> oh, yeah, right. consumption-based. Yeah. The bigger the tattoo, the more consumption, <laughs> okay. right? Shave your head, put a cloud on the top of your head, <laughs> grow the hair back. <laughs> so, uh, so Chris is here at uh, Extreme 365. It's kind of sad we have to... Go to conferences to see our colleagues from yeah. from, from UK, but yeah, but uh, yeah, he's here. We're doing some sessions and having a good time, and uh, you got to meet a lot of the MVPs and people uh, people in the community. Oh, it's so, amazing, man! Having a good like, time. Yeah, thanks so much for introducing me. A really, a really nice bunch of people, actually. And so, uh, U.S. food versus U.K. food, which is better? Dude, 100% U.S. food. I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> U.K. guys, I love you, man. But like, you know, I was, I was telling you guys the other night, the flavor here is just amazing, man. I could eat all day. So, some start, of us do. I just want to start chanting, USA, USA. <laughs> yes. Uh, and there's a reason we're fatter. That's right. <laughs> sure. I actually do feel like I probably put on a bit of weight, but that was after eating 15 Hooters chicken wings the other day. Wow. Nice. That was rock solid, man, and drinking a lot of beer, so wow. I'm happy. <laughs> That'll do it. So, yeah. um, what are we talking about? LinkedIn? Mm. Yeah, so, <laughs> I suppose the first part of this, and I don't want to take over, but I had some questions for Sean, and okay. it's around Sales Navigator. And sure. Don't worry, don't worry, dude, I'm not going to set you up for failure. No, not a problem. <laughs> I just actually sat through one of Sean's uh, demos, and I'm thoroughly impressed. I actually hadn't seen all that functionality, man, and like, it looks awesome. Um, the last time I actually saw Sales Navigator, God, it was ages ago, and it I think it was an app source and was a bit of a, a problematic download. Mm-hmm. That was when it was still, when it was before it was like really the Microsoft version right. of the yeah. solution. It was a, right. it was a, it was a service was a that could work on. with, with Salesforce and CRM, right. and it was yeah. generally unimpressive across the board. Mm-hmm. And I think I think that's probably where some of my my negative perception was. Um, after seeing what I saw today, I'm blown away. Um, so. I mean, just to give you guys some information. So Sean showed me some of the bits and pieces around lead management, um, point point drives. Point drive. Yeah, yeah, there point we go. Point drive, my favorite. My some favorite, very, some uh, very cool stuff there. Yeah, I, I really enjoyed that. And then sort of what, what it would look like inside Dynamics 365 and customer engagement and how it all works. Mm-hmm. And I suppose, like, my first question is around the UI. So I noticed, you know, when you go onto Sales Navigator, the UI looks really nice. Um, yep. It looks a lot more crispy. 
you, you showed us a bit of a difference between how it looks on your actual personal LinkedIn right. and how it looks sort of on Sales Navigator. If you could just share some more info around that. Yeah, well, really because what it, what, what it does, the differential in the two experiences, one is a, is a broader kind of community look. Like what is everybody looking at? Mm. What are the things that might be of interest to you based on people that you follow? Right or have can, is a connection mm-hmm. with Sales Navigator. It's a targeted look, specifically to the accounts and leads that you follow, and information that's important to be able to connect with them in a in a in an actionable manner. Right. So, what what news stories have affected those accounts? Uh, what what leads have changed jobs recently? Um, what articles have been shared by people at the at the accounts you're following that could be potential leads? Yeah, they're all they're all touch points that are, are just asking to be uh, to be taken advantage of. Really. Okay, so essentially, you you have the that that information at your fingertips. You can grab it whenever you need. Mm-hmm. The question I'd ask is, what is the difference between the information in LinkedIn Sales Navigator and the information in Dynamics? Is there a link between the two, or is it just completely separate so right now it is a it is a separate set of data um you have to remember unlike thing under unlike add-ins like uh insights so mm-hmm. inside view yeah they synchronize actually right. synchronize the data yeah, yeah you're actually yeah. pulling data down into dynamics for that mm-hmm. there's privacy uh rules and regs with linkedin for their um for the people that subscribe yeah. their members right so you can't necessarily just wholesale pull data down into dynamics yeah that right? would be a little dodgy <laughs> right you, I, the way I look at it is you're using LinkedIn uh, as a tool to to find potential um, touch points with leads and accounts that you follow cool with dynamics you're documenting the interactions you have with people in your um, in your CRM whether they're current customers prospective cu- clients um, or vendors, partners, what have you, right? Cool. So the, the difference is, to me, I create a record in Dynamics. With the, with the widget from the LinkedIn member profile, I can find out whether or not, one, they're in LinkedIn. Mm. Um, it's very possible they may not be part of LinkedIn. But if they are in LinkedIn, I can then look at that, save them as a lead within Sales Navigator, right? And then also see from that, I could see what icebreakers are potential. Mm. You know, so what what things have what happened with that person or account that may be of interest to me as a company, uh, may be of interest to me as a uh, as someone trying to reach out and connect with them. Yeah, um, I could look at things like Team Link. Uh, who in my who in my team? has some sort of relationship with them that that, cool. that can provide a warm handoff mm. right it's always better to it's always better to, to to reach out to someone where there's context totally i i right. massively agree and i think that's one of the big wins like when i today's a good example mm-hmm. i would probably not have added half the people i did on linkedin if i didn't have the introduction from you guys whether right. it be a a kind of personal introduction or just via LinkedIn it's still right. really important right yeah. and, and one of the big differences between Sales Navigator and standard LinkedIn if I can if I send you a connection you're you may or may not know who I am mm. right you may or may not decide to engage right because one of the options when you get receive a connection if you say no you can indicate I don't know this person yeah that's true with Navigator you're you're following them as a lead as opposed to trying to engage them as a connection straight away yeah so you're actually kind of getting to know the person's actions before exactly. you, 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 yeah and that makes sense you're to building a relationship once you build that rapport and engage with them by all means then you could ask for the connection mm. which then they become part of your ability to connect with others within that organization yeah, right? so your circle their circle of influence becomes part of yours and Correct. it grows with you that's yeah. the big difference between sales navigator and standard linkedin okay so the question that came up one of the guys asked which was good was okay so i have this person on linkedin i'm connected to him i'm talking to him i want to save as a lead mm-hmm. the save as lead saves as linkedin lead not something in crm mm-hmm. right what options do we have 
for I find somebody and I want to get them in CRM? Is it I just have to manually create that contact in CRM, mm-hmm. or is is there any kind of synchronization? There is no synchronization of the actual records. And of that's something that if you look at the videos of the presentations from Ignite or other places, it looks like we are ultimately going there and down the road. It's it's possible, but I would say that there's going to have to be some changes to the LinkedIn um, T's and C's. Yeah, because people won't willingly want to share their data. Well, they might, but not to that point. You. The other thing that I'm worried about is if you think about rules like GDPR, right? Mm-hmm. So that regulation in, in um, the EU. GDP what? <laughs> General Data Protection Regulation. Okay. Yeah, yeah. Sorry, man. I, okay. I acronymized you. There you go. <laughs> We're Americans. We don't yeah. know GDPR. <laughs> <laughs> no comment. Yeah. No, so it's, 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 it's important because there are rules and regulations about what data you can store about, about somebody. Mm-hmm. So if you think about it, um, I'm going to use the example of insurance. You have yourself as a contact in a CRM system, mm-hmm. right? So that's your personal data. But there's also activities, there'll be documentation, there'll mm-hmm. be emails, mm-hmm. there'll be interactions. And all of that stuff becomes part of the, that. All of that stuff is your data, effectively. Right. So if you phone in and you request every single piece of data that that company has on someone, you have to be able to produce it. And if you add somebody unwillingly, so if they don't physically agree to you being in your system, mm-hmm. you can get into a bit of trouble. Mm-hmm. Right. Now, obviously... The regulations are still a little bit vague, and not, I don't think anyone knows all the rules. But what we have to do is we have to be prepared, and I think, you know, we are looking into these types of things. We have to understand that you know th- these rules might change. We don't know what's going to happen, but right. essentially, from a platform point of view, we've got the ability to cater for them. So, where does the origin of your contact come from when you use LinkedIn? Is it I'm searching LinkedIn and I'm finding people, and it's recommending? I'm following companies and it's mm-hmm. it's recommending people so, that I may be, may be leads for me or what? So this is what happens. When you start with Sales Navigator, your first entry into Sales Navigator asks you a number of questions. What industries are you interested in? What companies are you interested in? What people are you interested in? And you can actually indicate that right from jump. So when you do that every day on the mobile mm-hmm. device, on the Sales, Sales Navigator app, you're going to get a list of recommended accounts to follow and recommended leads okay. based on that criteria. Okay. So if I'm, let's say I'm selling, let's say I'm selling um, monitoring equipment, and I'm interested in healthcare companies. I'm interested in uh, manufacturing firms, and I'm interested in aeronautical space, space and air. Okay. Okay. I can indicate those industries. And it will then go to LinkedIn and say, here are some companies that may be of interest to you. Okay. Right? No. Um, it'll also look at your followed accounts and your leads and say, here's some recommended leads based on the people you currently follow. Right. Okay, so it is based on who you're currently following. Mm-hmm. Okay, that, right. that, that's that's important. Mm-hmm. And so then I can see Chris Huntingford, I'm two or three levels away from him, but I know this person that knows him. Mm-hmm. Right. And so I can reach out to him and say, hey, can you intro me or whatever right. and warm up the cold call mm. right and then and then from there um, that's that's how you're that's how you're getting just raw LinkedIn data but to your question about how am I create how am I creating the contact records or account records in dynamics 365 I like to look at this as my method would be I'm using insights to build those records yeah right because you have an idea of who you want to go after. Absolutely. Right? So if I if I have a recommended lead and I save it as a lead and I follow the account in LinkedIn, I have the name of the account. I have the name of the person. So now I can create the record in Dynamics and then pull data in from Insights if they're a publicly traded company. Yeah. Ideally, mm-hmm. most private companies are in there as well, but you don't have as much contextual data. Um, given their privacy. Um, but you could then build those records. And this is, again, really this is in U.S. because in in U.K. and in the EU, uh, Insights is hit or miss on whether or not it's going to give you a lot of content yeah, for those companies. Right? Yeah, we've, we've had a couple of uh, interesting experiences when searching for companies live. So. Right. But, right. But the, Insights really is, for me, is a placeholder for whatever data provider you're using to feed or nurture your data. Yeah. Right. So 
you're 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 given the knowledge of their existence in LinkedIn. You create the record in Dynamics, then you create the link between Dynamics and LinkedIn. Yeah. Okay. It's not you're not bringing data in, um, and by creating that link, once the link is there, you can then have the context and look at the data in the context of either LinkedIn or CRM. So when you're in Sales Navigator, you have buttons to view the record in Dynamics. Yeah. When you're uh, entering it, it, when you're creating an in-mail to send to a potential uh, lead, uh, you can track that back to Dynamics as an activity. When you're entering a note, you can track that in as a, a activity. Um, if you're connected to the to the lead uh, at, on, a, on a first level relationship, mm -hmm. then you can send a message and track that back to Dynamics as an activity. So you're you're tracking those inf those details in in activity, CRM activities, so you have that historical view of the interaction. The big bang for the buck, though, with with uh, Sales Navigator, to me, is what you can do with Point Drive yeah. and sending <laughs> um, presentations and creating content and distributing that content to those leads and organizations yeah. and understanding how they're they're interacting with that data. So before we get there, just to kind of put a put a pin in sure. what we were talking about. Um, so if you were talking to somebody who doesn't use LinkedIn Sales Navigator, I think what you just described is a little bit different than what they might envision. I think yeah. everybody envisions, oh great, I can see everybody's LinkedIn profile now and suck it into CRM, and that's oh, not no, what it is. No, no. And there's, you don't want to do that. No. But if you're working with salespeople, and I was one, so I can say salespeople sometimes are lazy. <laughs> and they don't want to do any work, and they want to have everything. So they think, oh, great, I use LinkedIn, so it's going to be in CRM. They're still going to have to do a bit of work mm -hmm. yep. to be able to really take advantage mm -hmm. of this. And I guess the, the idea is warm up the cold call mm -hmm. and... An in mail generally, you may have more probability of getting a response rather than a cold email. Right, and in, in, in using the context of the information provided through the news, the uh, recently changed jobs, mm -hmm. the icebreakers that you're getting from Sales Navigator increases the probability that one that in mail is going to be read, right. and two the in mail is going to be responded to. So. And they give you they give some good guidance around how to do it right. Mm -hmm. A lot of the messages I get on LinkedIn are not doing it right. They're no, just, saying, just at a rate. Hey, buy our product, but they right. recommend adding value like sharing a link mm -hmm. or like sharing mm -hmm. a document or, or webinar or something, and more relational type selling rather than the hard. Here's our right. product. It doesn't know, work. Buy our storage no. service. Right. <laughs> right. Exactly. Okay. So we talked about, you know, so we covered, you know, just so you have a realistic of what the integration really means from a profile standpoint, then the point drive stuff, you know, is something that surprised me. It wasn't the first thing on my mind, but it's really powerful. So what is point drive? Point drive is a uh, repository for your organization to create and manage content uh, that is, that can be shared to your leads and um, accounts that you follow uh, in a manner that can be um, viewed with with metrics. So think of it kind of like email engagement in Dynamics 365, but within LinkedIn. So when you send a message to someone, you have no idea whether they looked at it, uh, if you've included any links or any uh Attachments. You have no idea whether or not they've opened them. With Point Drive, you can customize this content to the person you are sending it to, adding contacts, adding value right from go. Um, you can add multiple types of content to a Point Drive presentation. So, uh, in the example that I use in the presentation, I added a presentation and I added a link to uh, our CRM Audio website, and I can add a video from uh, our video channel, mm -hmm. right? So that's all in one presentation that they get by clicking on that link. When they click on that link, I can then see how many pages of the presentation they looked at, how long they spent doing that, did they download the content. I can see if they clicked on the link for the website and then from 
uh, than using other tools that we use for the website where you can see how long they stayed there. Mm-hmm. Um, if we looked at uh, the the video, then you could see if they if they clicked on that video, and you could see how many uh, looking at our subscribers on on uh, the video channel. We could see that as well. So there's a lot of content that you can get, a lot of information and details that you can get from that interaction that you wouldn't get just by sending an in mail normally, right? No. And then from those, you can take that and convert that into sales activities. Mm-hmm. So if you see that, for example, I sent a presentation to Tony Stein at CRMUG. He Hi, forwarded Tony. it. Hi, Tony. Good to see you. Um, he forwarded it on to his team, and I knew who they that they opened it, even though I didn't send it to them. Okay. Because it it tracked it so, that they opened it. So since besides being Captain Point Drive, you yeah. also <laughs> you also are Mister Relationship Insights. Yes. And Relationship Insights has email insights where I can track attachments. Yes, and I can, can see, I can stalk you and see. Oh, you just opened your email at six oh five p.m. on your iPhone at this location. Um, well, you can't do the location your, anymore. They took that away. Really? Yeah, because it was creepy, Big Brother. <laughs> but there is a fine line between being cool and being creepy. Yes, like, yes. Yeah. But now the the big difference between email engagement and what that does, and what the metrics that Point Drive is gathering, with email engagement, that is tracking emails going through. Um, dynamics and being tracked, right? Yeah. So I can create a presentation in Point Drive, copy that link, put that link in an email in Dynamics, send it out, mm-hmm. and I could get the metrics on did they open the email? Then I can go over to Navigator and see mm-hmm. in Point Drive and see the metrics on the content. It's like a double headed sword. Right. Yeah. The the difference being <laughs> the difference being if you have an attachment in your email in Dynamics, you have to have that attachment in OneDrive for Business yeah. in order to track the metrics for the yeah. attachment, right? Yeah. Um, if you have a link, it will the email engagement will tell whether or not you clicked on the link. So if you have a link to a point drive presentation, mm-hmm. you'll have the metrics in Dynamics to say they opened the email and they clicked on the link. Mm-hmm. Then you go to Navigator and you say, they open. They not only open the link, but they looked at these pages. They spent this much time, downloaded it. Yeah. Oh, there's someone else that you didn't send this email to, so they must have forwarded it. Yeah. Well, I, th- I think it. They're different use cases. Absolutely. Yeah. I think the point drive. You have a nice page. You can customize the look. You can have multiple attachments mm-hmm. in there. Think of it. I kind of like the next generation of sales literature. Yeah. I, yeah. Because you, know, you yeah. got more of a reusable library than yeah. you've got your you know your brochures and, and information nice personalized that multiple people can take and save as their own. Yeah. Whereas you know I might use the email insights just for one on one emails. Right. You know, like following up with the customer and wanting to see that they looked at it or right. something that you probably wouldn't want to use a Point Drive for. No. Right. right. And and with and with Point Drive, you're 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 getting multiple channels within a single presentation theoretically depending on what the content is that you're sending um, and and it's it's incredibly powerful it's kind of a while it would be great if in email engagement you could see not only the email engagement information from exchange but you could also see the point drive information from the link um, that's not there right now. That would now. be weapons grade, though. It that, would be. Yeah, it would be, be fantastic. Great. It would be fantastic. <laughs> um, you know, it, and that would be a great option. But you know, I, I think the other piece with the uh, point drive presentation capabilities in terms of sales literature is it's not only the standard sales literature, mm-hmm. but it's a it's a sales literature with a bit of a customer journey attached to it because you're adding that flavor text and that navigational text to mm-hmm. give them context in how you're wanting them to consume the information mm-hmm. and and how that you can then relate back to that information when yeah. you when you talk to them so it's a lot better than email with five attachments because you can have them right in a way that drives them through the way you want them to to see it and they can view it in line there or or Mm -hmm. and and you can also then right from the presentation they can reach out to you directly through email or other contact methods that you expose so what do you think Chris I I think it's fantastic you know when I saw um, when Sean showed it to me earlier 
the, it just it really stood out as something that you can tell a story with, mm-hmm. and that's the one thing I really liked. And the other thing was you got trackable information. The fact that you can see how many pages of the of the slideshow or presentation they viewed is unbelievable. Right. The fact that you can see how long they've spent on it. Um, what I think that it would be awesome to have that in dynamics and utilize that in segmentation for marketing. Mm-hmm. But again, you know, it's not really there. To me, there's a lot of quick wins here, and to me, you're kind of you're setting your sales team up for success by providing them with a tool like that. And I reckon, you know, if I look at the guys that I work with um, from the UK team, they would love to have something like that where they could, you know, provide direct information to their customers. Mm-hmm. And it's it just, it's a massively quick win. I, I can't Absolutely. see any downside to it at all. Absolutely. And I would love to see action cards in Relationship Assistant yeah. regarding this data. That, that, that would be that like would double be cool. So yeah. what, is, what are the pieces that come back in? Because you do get in-mail history if you have the, synchronous, mm. have the sync set up. Right. And so, you know, if you send it, that's a, that's a big win because mm-hmm. your, your salespeople are probably contacting people through LinkedIn mail. Mm-hmm. Right mm-hmm. now, but you're not having record of that track in CRM. Well, mm-hmm. this gives them the ability to do that mm-hmm. and still have that. Mm-hmm. What from something from the point drive syncs back in there too, right? Yeah, it's it's emails or I'm sorry, in mails, messages, notes, and phone calls. If you use the mobile app, those okay. are the four pieces. I have a question on. So they come back as activities. Are they custom activities that are sitting in CRM, or is it uh, like in an email format? Those in- it's rooms? a unique activity type. Like if mm, you if you go okay. and do the drop down the activity pane, you see a specific in mail. So it actually says in mail. Can you explain, Captain Point Drive, how <laughs> the um, in mail works? I don't. I don't. I get it, but I don't because I know I can send somebody a message through LinkedIn. Right. Only if you're connected to if them. If I'm connected to them. Is that considered an in-mail? And no. what's the difference and what if with the you get some extra superpowers for in mail right. with with the sales navigator. What, right. What so, is that? So with messages you're you're sending messages when you're connected. There's no that's just it's just like sending a, a note. Let's send one one right. to one sort of correct. Yeah. You've already you've already been linked. You, every there's an acknowledgement that uh, you have that openness to communicate. Yeah. Right. With InMail, dependent on your subscription, you have a certain number of InMail messages per month that you can send. Um, with Sales Navigator, I believe it starts at 150. Okay. That you have, but InMail, and if any LinkedIn people are listening, and I say this wrong, sorry, but I believe the InMail in it's like an invitation to mail, right? Okay. So when you send an in mail, you'll notice when you send it um, whether or not it's been accepted. So think of it like it's an invitation to talk. And if you haven't accepted that invitation, well, then I don't want to talk. Yeah. Right. Yeah. But once they accept it, then then you can then you can continue to talk via in mail. Um, but that that's really the biggest difference is you have a you have a set number of potential invitations you can send out per period so it's not spam. Um, yeah, it's not a marketing tool. It's right. Right. <laughs> okay. So, but if I get an in mail from someone, does it show up in my messages? It'll show in your sales navigator. Uh, no, I mean inbox. somebody has sales navigator. They send me a message, an in mail. Does that show up in the? Recipient. It'll show up messages. in your. In, it'll show up in your regular inbox. Yeah. So when I have my inbox here, some of these people, like recruiters that I'm not connected to. Yep. That's in mail. Potentially, yes. Okay. If you're not connected to them, if it's if it's other than first degree connection, it's an in mail. Mm. Okay. I've noticed that what it'll do. So it like splits the screen. If you have a look there. Right. So it'll be. They. This is logged as a new opportunity. In, in my LinkedIn, mm-hmm. but um, here's are the people I'm chatting to standard, but I'm not I'm not connected to that person. Right. Yeah. And it says right off. It says in mail. Yep. Absolutely. So got if I go it. see all of them, and it says filter by in mail. There we go. Yeah. Yeah. Very smart little tool. Mm-hmm. I will say. And and I really like also in the um, mobile app with Sales Navigator. If you if you have a phone number accessible to it, you can use that to make a phone call and it'll use your, your obviously your your phone on your phone but you can then track that as an activity as well 
and you mentioned that you can set whether you can track activities or not. Mm-hmm. So by yeah. user through the the sales navigator administrator, yeah, can indicate which users in your team with the sales navigator that's licensing cool. can track back to CRM. Correct. That's, that's brilliant. Mm-hmm. It's it's an incredibly powerful tool, and if you, uh, I, I I was incorrect when I said this earlier in the presentation, but you can you can get a uh, team level. No, I'm sorry, professional level. Trump trial not the team so you don't you don't get the widget and you don't get the um point drive and such okay but uh point drive is an enterprise level um Mm -hmm. uh, solution on enterprise agreement and the one thing i will ask is do you need any fancy linkedin licensing for this like premium it's more than premium it's 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 an enterprise uh or team to get the widget if you want the full sales navigator with point drive and everything, that's the, that's the full um, relationship sales license uh, on an enterprise level. Perfect. Yeah, yeah, that's awesome. So let's talk inside view versus LinkedIn. We know they're they're dramatically different, and mm-hmm. LinkedIn has high value, especially because the difference is LinkedIn is the one place that people actively want to put their information out on versus a DNB or inside view where they are farming for that data right but i find inside view still has a lot of value oh it does i find the um, company news feed inside of inside view really helpful mm-hmm. if you want to like read up on a company before mm-hmm. you go meet with them um and see where their financials are trending and then get the people for the company to create new contacts and have them sink in that's still very valuable and i can see them working together because if i can't yep. have linkedin create the contact if i want to focus in on a company yep. i could sync the contacts for that company using inside view then pull up the linkedin and right. go deeper and see my connections right. and find mm. and that works com- great in the u.s but outside of the u.s it's a little, a little spotty yeah so, they've, yeah. so they have other, increased uh, their, in certain sources. countries but mm-hmm. certain countries it has less value than others right. um and I think GDPR will be interesting for those for those uh, guys. But yeah. in the U.S., I think it's U.S. Ha- and especially because in U.S. and Canada, Inside View is a standard part of your subscription. You should use it. You, you, it doesn't cost you anything else, right. and it can supplement. And not every, the other thing is, I don't think anybody's going to want to get LinkedIn Sales Navigator for every CRM user. No, 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 no. no. And you Just shouldn't. Specific salespeople. You know, even maybe inside salespeople, you might not want to if they have a defined market. Like we have customers that have, you know, you sell, uh, you know, a, aluminum to the automotive industry. You've got a set number of customers you work with. Exactly. Cool. <laughs> and, you know, but if, as long as you got, you know, Ford, Ford, uh, General Motors, Toyota, and Honda, and BMW covered, you know, you got yeah. your world there. But. Uh, but you know, if you have, especially like uh, outside salespeople or people that you know are prospecting type, not the not the people farming existing accounts right. per se, but people prospecting, you know, but salespeople, the people, industry solution people, mm-hmm. product people that that that's that sort but of. But the level. other people still need tools to find data, and mm-hmm. especially you know the ability that um, that Inside View has, like with their refresh tool, yep. to have more of an automated. Data sure, yeah. enhancement sure. service. That's pretty. That's pretty valuable if you're in an, if you're in an area where it works. Absolutely, absolutely. And and using the two in conjunction with each other uh, really does improve the level and quality of your data, as well as the context of how you can use the data within your team. That's the big play for Sales Navigator. Yep. The context within your team on how you could leverage that data to increase your sales. Mm-hmm. Yeah, our insights are still very powerful. I find it very useful. I mean, we do we do some stuff in legal, and um, they love it when mm-hmm. we show them. And, and look, it's it's a great tool there. Um, mm-hmm. Obviously, it's got its place, and it really does. But in certain areas, it's it's amazing. And I'm I'm yeah. a big I'm I'm still a huge fan. Mm-hmm. And I, I think I think people should try both. Yeah, um, because you know you you want to know what comes out of the box, and what comes out of the box is actually pretty good. It's yeah. not it's not a it's not a half rate service. It's actually it's actually quite good and can help you, you know, where LinkedIn is helpful for finding people and connecting to people through your other connections. It's not the I'm gonna go find everybody in this town and reach out and 
and exactly you know and there's also the b2b versus b2c i think you'll find that you know linkedin is good for the for the personal contacts but you might not have everybody on the company on linkedin right exactly and the executives right. a lot of times aren't you know, the higher up you go, the less likely sometimes you are to have an active LinkedIn exactly. profile. And so then having that information from other sources done in Bradstreet or, or Inside View or the sources, or the IQ. thousands of sources yeah. that Inside View uses mm-hmm. um, is, is helpful. Hugely Absolutely. helpful. Hugely. Absolutely. It's it's a great suite of tools that, we, that they're continuing to build that um, really makes... Uh, and this was their intent when they acquired LinkedIn. It really does make it a differentiator for Dynamics 365 as opposed to uh, yeah. other other uh, solutions. Yeah, I'm I'm very excited to see where they're going to go with it from a roadmap point of view, and that that's something that I'd I'd, I'd like visibility into, but um, I really want to see what they're going to do because if they're doing this now. Yeah, in the future, I just think it's going to be brilliant. I can yeah. only do so much, Chris. <laughs> I know, but it's just, as hard as I can. So, so now Everybody should excited. go watch the watch the Ignite videos about about relationship sales. Yeah, because mm. there's a lot coming for both tying the graph into CRM, but also Office 365. Mm. Yeah, because think of all the things you could do with Outlook or Word or whatever if you had access to yeah. that information. And, and we're not even talking about the uh, the LinkedIn lead gen forms yeah. and what the integration with LinkedIn they're doing for talent. I mean, there's a lot more to this LinkedIn um, proposal that Microsoft is presenting um, that's going to be very powerful for uh, for companies. So has your di- getting deep with the LinkedIn Sales Navigator, has it changed your personal LinkedIn habits at all? Like, are you doing things differently in the way you set your profile up? Uh, I take it a little more seriously. Okay. Because I know that when I send something via Sales Navigator, chances are better that they're actually going to look at it. Yeah. <laughs> so You're being watched. <laughs> yeah. So, yeah, it, it does. And, and it makes me more mindful of what I, what I post yeah. as, you know, information. You know, I, I should have taken my... Uh, my Extreme 365 profile a little bit more seriously. I filled out the description of my session and it had a little text box that said, put your bio in here. And so I put like a line that said, I'm awesome. Yeah. I'm no. an MVP and I have a podcast. Yeah. And then I look at everybody else's and they're like, yeah, I have a paragraph. Five pages long <laughs> yeah. with starting from birth yeah. and all the major accomplishments yeah. including their Boy Scout rank. I'm Joel. <laughs> have podcasts. <laughs> He's good. Have no time for bio. Yeah. yeah. That's nah, all right. You're you Joel Lindstrom, for God's sake. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> it's all good. But oh, your LinkedIn amazing. profile is much better. Well, thanks. You're welcome. I still enjoy going to using the endorsements on LinkedIn and finding obscure ones. My favorite one is mountaineering. You guys yeah. have got to go into mine. I have yeah. be, I've been endorsed for being awesome. There you go. <laughs> Scott Sewell is endorsed for barbecue. <laughs> <laughs> Well, he should be. Well, this uh, has been I'm CRM gonna, Audio, gonna the Dynamics 365 podcast. I'll go think of Business Solutions yeah. MVPs, Goat herding. George Dubinsky, <laughs> Joel Lindstrom, and Sean Tabor. This podcast is a production of Dynamic Podcasts, LLC. Follow us on Twitter at CRM Audio. Subscribe to our podcast on Apple Podcasts, Google Play Music, SoundCloud, Stitcher, TuneIn, or any place else that fine podcasts are available. You can email us at voice at crm.audio with questions or topic suggestions.